हेलो एंड वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम बैक टू आर डेली करंट अफेयर्स वीडियोस आई होप एवरी वन ऑफ यू इज़ फाइन एंड योर प्रिपरेशन इज गोइंग वेल एंड यू आर सॉल्विंग टेस्ट्स एंड प्रैक्टिसिंग देम इन येस्टरडेज वीडियोज इन येस्टरडेज डेली करंट अफेयर वीडियो देर वर सम डाउट्स रिगार्डिंग नंबर वन डाउट वॉज रिगार्डिंग मेघ राज एंड मेघ दूत right and the second doubt was regarding whether the first state assembly to implement national e vidhan was himachal pradesh or nagaland okay to isko jaldi se resolve karna hi better rahega so the key issue here is okay uh, meghraj is now a cloud computing app which is developed by nic and it will be used for national e vidhan project all right but initially its name was meghdoot which was first developed by ctac in the year 2012 and both of these organizations nic and ctac come under the ambit of ministry of electronics and information technology all right uh, second uh, doubt was uh, whether the first state to implement national e vidhan is nagaland or himachal pradesh so let me tell you that the first state to implement national e vidhan project is nagaland himachal pradesh in himachal pradesh palampur assembly is the first constituent assembly right it is the first constituent assembly to implement national e vidhan and nagaland is the first state assembly to implement national e vidhan project all right so i hope the doubts have been clarified you are all encouraged to you know write down your doubts further in the comments below so that i can keep resolving them because our main objective here is to help you retain uh, correct facts for the main examination right so no risk can be taken on that on that account so please post more doubts more questions anything and everything is most welcome down in the comments below All right so moving on to the first question for today is who is the managing director of National Capital Region Transport Com Corporation All right so National Capital Region ka jo transport corporation hai who is the managing director for that transport corporation please answer quickly you have options Vinay Kumar uh, Mr Arjun Ram Meghwal Rajiv Verma H Wilson Gyanesh Kumar All right so the correct answer here is Mr Vinay Kumar Vinay Kumar is the MD of NCRTC. All right, NCRTC is actually a joint venture. It is a joint venture between the government of Haryana and the governments of Delhi, uh, UP, Rajasthan, and Haryana. All right, it is a joint venture between the government of India and the go state governments of Delhi. Union Territory of Delhi, UP, Rajasthan, and Haryana, and the main objective of NCRTC is to develop regional rapid transit systems in these states. And its me, sab se pehla transit system that has been established is between Delhi and Meerut via Ghaziabad, which reduces your travel time from eighty-two kilometers to just fifty-five minutes. All right, so it is expected to start in the year twenty twenty-three. All right. So this is all for this uh, slide. I guess uh, we will keep updating you as and when uh, new uh, projects are launched. All right. Another important slide for today is how much loan has been approved by JICA. JICA. कल ही हम लोगों ने अपने वीडियो में किया था. We studied about JICA at length yesterday. We learnt that since two thousand seven and eight, uh, JICA has extended a loan of rupees one lakh fifty thousand crores to the Indian economy. Soft loans. All right. JICA is an official development agency. right it is an official development agency so basically most developed countries has an oda usa has an oda that invests in india and japan is the second largest investor uh, of uh, uh, development and infrastructure in india all right so jica has extended a lot of loans so and investment project so answer this question 14th india japan summit 2022 celebrating 70 years of india and japan diplomacy how much amount of uh, loan has been extended to india the correct answer here is 20400 crores all right so loaning and investing in infrastructure project is very very significant for the indian economy 
because these are long term loans and infrastructure projects are also have a very long term gestation period all right so jika has approved seven loans amounting to uh, this uh, 20400 crore right and these loans you can broadly classify them as investment in social sector infrastructure right this is social se sector infrastructure loans which means there are two types of infra infrastructure loans uh, or infrastructure as you know one is physical infrastructure and one is social infrastructure social infrastructure largely includes what health education and allied sectors right so you have connectivity water supply sewage healthcare horticulture biodiversity conservation all these are your social and environment uh, in infrastructure investments uh, for which jika has extended a loan of this much amount all right so a, a total of six memorandum of cooperations was signed between india and japan now let's have a broad look at what are the six uh, memorandum of cooperations memorandum of cooperation or memorandum of understanding it is one and the same thing please do not get confused all right so cyber security we have domestic wastewater management infrastructure sewage infrastructure industrial competitiveness sustainable urban development right all these uh, are broad uh, sectors in which jika has signed an mou with india all right so why is india japan relationship uh, very very significant number one is indo pacific this term has gained currency over the years and has intensified ever since uh, the coronavirus outbreak. The world is uh, actually repelling the Chinese dominant in the Pacific Ocean. They are repelling the Chinese dominance in the South China Sea. All right, so Indo-Pacific means a proper world order. All right, respecting the sovereignty of all the nations, which China is trying to hamper in some way or the other, in order to maintain that balance of power. Indo-Pacific has gained currency. This term is being used by the U.S. president, by Japan, and many other countries who want to collaborate with India on an array of projects. All right, so India-Japan uh, has also collaborated on several other sectors, just like India and US has signed a logistic exchange memorandum of agreement. India and Japan has also uh, signed an agreement in which the Indian Army and the Japanese Army can use their military facilities offshore in each other's respective countries. All right, another third most important agreement between India and Japan is currency swap agreement right currency swap or the bilateral swap agreement you won't believe it when it was signed at that time it was one of the largest bilateral swap agreement in the world uh, costing rupees 75 billion dollars right how will it benefit the indian economy the indian traders the cost of capital for indian entrepreneurs and manufacturing units will be reduced to a great extent and japan will not be needing loans or uh, japan and india will not be le uh, needing us dollars to trade with each other so this is the main significance right it is very important i'm not trying to overload you with any information or anything but i'm trying to build a perspective a perspective that will help you retain things right because when you uh, channel your th thought process in that entire issue you remember facts very very quickly right this is called connecting the dots yesterday in yesterday's uh, current affairs we read about jika and today again it is in the news all right so it is very important to connect the dots revise your current affairs build a perspective and an overview overview it will not only help you in the exam but it will help you in the overall personality development and the interview as well all right so next slide is who is the foreign minister of austria austria ke foreign minister kon hai recently there was a meeting between uh, his indian counterpart s jay shankar right Honorable S. J. Shankar and Foreign Minister of Austria recently met. The correct answer is Alexander Schallenberg. All right. So there was this current meeting uh, between India and Austria. 
India and Austria have been collaborating in the fields of steel, manufacturing, metallurgy, right? And they have deep established cultural ties in uh, with regards to Sanskrit and Buddhism. There is an entire department in the University of Vienna in Australia dedicated to the study of Sanskrit. All right, so. It is very important, uh, not only Central Asian, but European countries, small European countries, important, significant European countries, say India ka tie or bhi zada improve ho, it is obviously very good. Who is the Chancellor of Australia? Christian Kern. All right. The uh, Chancellor of Australia, his counterpart would be Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. The Chancellor of Australia would be Christian all right these are the byproducts of the facts that you study in your main current affairs you should uh, you know keep knowledge on them you should know these pointers anything can be asked in the exam be it one liner or be it a broad objective moving on to the next question we have which of the following companies has signed an mou with australia's critical mineral facilitation to establish a framework for joint investments in australian projects to mine critical okay it is a long question but okay one important uh, takeaway from this fact this thing over here is whenever you face such a long question over here please do not get scared Kabi kabi aisa possible ho sakta that you know the answer to this question, but because you have to read so many lines, maybe you get scared or uh, you know, appalled by the length of the question and not attempt it. Please don't do that. Stay calm, believe in your knowledge, trust what you have studied, trust your revision, and carefully read the keywords of the question and answer it. Okay? There is there is no need to complicate some very simple and obvious things. All right, so answer this question correctly. Mainly this question is asking which Indian company has signed an MOU with Australia's Critical Minerals Facilitation Office, right? CMFO is a very important critical mineral facilitation office in Australia. Australia is the second largest supplier of critical minerals to the world after China, right? So please answer the question quickly. I expect you all to know the full forms you are preparing for the exam these companies keep coming in the current affairs time and again so the correct answer here is kbil that is <coughs> sorry khanaj bidesh india limited right so it is the second india australian virtual summit during the second uh, India Australia virtual summit, which was commenced in the year 2020, it is the second edition, right? It was addressed by Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Prime Min Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, right? And it si also signed a uh, investment amount, right? An investment amount worth two eighty million dollars, amounting to rupees fifteen hundred crores in areas like space innovation and technologies. All right, main point here is India's Khanish Bidesh India Limited is a very important office under the Ministry of Mines, right? Its aim is to ensure the uh, supply, continuous supply of critical metals to the Indian economy. Okay, so what are critical metals? Critical metals, no. Critical minerals are those minerals who are that are very, very essential or crucial for the functioning of the economy, whose supply is endangered because of their overuse or supply. All right. So all these factors are there. Now, critical minerals includes both metals and non-metals, right? So, uh, so uh, for example, the main critical minerals for which India and Australia has signed a partnership is lithium, uh, cobalt, right, vanadium. All right, lithium ion batteries. Lithium is a very important rare earth metal, right? India imports most of the lithium that is used in India is actually imported from countries like China. Latin American countries like Argentina, right? So to counter the Chinese dominance in the export of rare earth metal, this critical uh, um, 
एम ओ यू और अ पैक्ट वॉज साइंड बिटवीन इंडिया एंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया राइट एंड ऑल्सो अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्ट हेर इज माइग्रेशन एंड मोबिलिटी पार्टनरशिप फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स एंड प्रोफेशनल इज ऑल्सो साइन बिटवीन दीज टू कंट्रीज यू ऑल नो द लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ स्टूडेंट एक्सचेंज प्रोग्राम्स एंड द इंडियन डायस्पोरा दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया ऑल राइट सो ऑस्ट्रेलिया इज अनदर वेरी वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट एंड एन इम्पॉर्टेंट कंट्री अदर देन जापान ऑस्ट्रेलिया इज ऑल्सो अ पार्ट ऑफ क्वाड्रिलैट्रल सिक्योरिटी डायलॉग राइट फॉर अनदर एंड ऑफकोर्स द यू एस क्वाड्रिलैट्रल सिक्योरिटी डायलॉग इज एम्ड एट रिस्टोरिंग वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर इन द इंडो पैसेफिक ऑब्वियसली द अंडरलाइन ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू काउंटर चाइनीज प्रेजेंस एंड डोमिनेंस इन दी पेसिफिक ओशन रीजन और राइट सो मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वी हैव विच एडिशन ऑफ स्मार्ट सिटीज इंडिया एक्सपो विल बी ऑर्गेनाइज एज पार्ट ऑफ इंडियाज लार्जेस्ट टेक एंड इंफ्रा एक्सपो और राइट सो स्मार्ट सिटी एक्सपो हैव बीन कंडक्टेड ऑलमोस्ट एवरी ईयर राइट एंड इंडियाज लार्जेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एक्सपो इज बींग ऑर्गेनाइज इन द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू सो क्वेश्चन विच एडिशन ऑफ स्मार्ट सिटी इंडिया एक्सपो इज बींग ऑर्गेनाइज इट इज एक्चुअली सेवेंथ एडिशन इज द करेक्ट आंसर और राइट नाउ द इवेंट विल बी ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द इंडिया ट्रेड इंडिया स्ट्रेट प्रमोशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और आई टी पी ओ एट प्रगति मैदान न्यू डेली right it will be 29th edition of convergence india expo which is for the telecom it and the internet industry mainly aimed at your digital india program right smart city india's expo is regarding the urban development it is the largest urban development expo as far as the entire asia is concerned this is the largest in asia all right urban development directed towards what sustainable urban development which includes clean technologies uh, green uh, infrastructure all these aspects right india soft is one of the largest collaboration of over 150 plus it industries right you all know the importance of it industries in india that we have to date is one of the biggest employers in the country so please have a look at this in detail all right so we have the next question is which statements is correct which of the following statements is correct in relation to the tenure of national aids and std control program national trades and sexually transmitted diseases or the std control program was launched by ministry of health and family welfare right so please answer this uh, question correctly there are five phases of this program latest one got an extension the tenure has been extended till this the program has been extended for 5 years okay please answer whether only 2 and 3 are correct or only 1 and 2 are correct all right so actually the correct answer over here is 1 and 3 only there is some typing error in this uh, powerpoints please ignore that the correct answer here is 1 and 3 <clears throat> all right it has been extended for a period of 5 years and the latest one got an extension right the 5 year extension dates till 31st march 2026 all right so obviously the union cabinet has approved the extension of this program right and granted an amount of almost 15000 crores now because of the uh, coordinated efforts of various minutes ministries and government officials and state governments of course the ratio uh, the recent uh, report released by india and hiv right uh, the percentage of hiv infected population in india is 0.20% right which is at 23.8 lakhs or something right with the highest number of infected people in maharashtra followed by andhra pradesh all right so obviously as we can see the percentage of hiv infection has reduced to a great extent after uh, a peak 
in uh, all over the world at a particular point of time right so uh, till march 24 2021 the phase 4 was uh, uh, on on implementation right but it uh, the it its time period concluded on march 31st 2021 and after the extension it has been extended for another 5 years all right so it is actually a success for our country which exercise is conducted by indian army with sichelis army all right sichelis is a very important uh, country it is a littoral uh, nation island uh, along with madagascar mauritius it is very very important uh, it is all a game of soft power again to counter chinese presence in south china sea south indian ocean and the indian ocean all right so these are various exercises al naga sahyog heo uh, sahyog exercise okay konkan shakti exercise lamitya and rimpak please answer quickly which is which is a joint military exercise okay here is a take away here is a hint it is a joint military exercise there are various exercises that india conducts with very uh, with various other countries some are joint military exercises some are naval exercises and some are air force exercises right so it is a joint military exercise lamitte lamitte which in sichelese language means friendship right friendship was conducted in 2022 again right so we have a uh, sichelis defense academy and the indian army conducted this exercise from 22nd of march to 31st it is the ninth edition and it is conducted every 2 years all right every 2 years or what it is a biennial exercise all right so let's have a look at the other exercises right uh, al naga al naga is an a uh, joint military exercises between india and oman sahyog is a joint military exercises between india and japan konkan shakti is a joint military exercise uh, between uh, okay sahyog is not a joint military exercise it is a joint naval exercise between indian coast guard and the japanese coast guard all right it is a coast guard exercise konkan shakti is a joint military exercise between the uh, between india and uk and rim pack is basically an exercise of the countries surrounding the ring of pacific ocean region it is conducted by the us indo pacific navy indo pacific navy command right so this is also very important to know i will share you a link the the link will later be added to this powerpoint presentation which will be shared to you all in telegram uh, later all right so you should go through that pib link that lists all the exercises right uh, that india conducts with various other countries all in all the three uh, sections of the uh, joint armed forces that is army exercises naval exercises and air force air force exercises all right so question number 8 we have fiki and consultancy ey ernst and young uh, global is a multinational professionals network service that cons uh, that and it is one of the largest consultancy firms in the world right and recently uh, federation of indian chamber of commerce and industry and ey has launched a a report regarding india's media and entertainment sector right which is expected to grow at what percentage compound annual growth rate iski kya hogi to touch 30.9 billion dollars by 2024 alright so compound annual growth rate for this would be what please answer this question quickly and so that we can quickly move on to the explanation all right so the compound annual growth rate would be 11% right so it has released a report according to which media and expect uh, and entertainment is to grow by 17% uh, in 2022 so that it could reach the pre covid level the pre covid level was 25.2 billion dollars 
and the compound annual growth rate is estimated to be 11% so that it could reach 30.9 billion dollars in 2024 all right so as per this report the largest media sector in india was first number at number 1 was the television media still number second was the digital media and number third was your print media all right this is important to note and by 2024 the advertising market especially the advertising market in your digital media is expected to reach by around 1 trillion dollars all right fiki uh, since we are studying about this so uh, Fe uh, federation of indian chambers of commerce and industry fiki was established in the year 1927 right and the person who established this i will leave you uh, mahatma gandhi suggested to establish this organization it is one of the largest and the highest trade organizations and the business organization in india to establish this it was suggested by mahatma gandhi ji to uh, ghanshyam das birla along with purushottam das thakur das all right both were very uh, important uh players in national movement when it came to indian capitalists and businessmen all right so moving on to the next slide we have jayati ghosh who is an indian development economist has been appointed as a member of the high level advisory board on effective multilateralism right as the name suggest effective multilateralism uh it it relates to what it relates to uh, global cooperation and the global partnership among various nations right so from this you can take away you can uh, probably guess that uh, effective multilateralism must be a high level advisory board that should be uh, should have been constituted by one of the international institutions right but the question here asks you prior to this uh, she was a chairperson of which of the following uh, institutes right uh, this center for economic studies and planning and the school of social sciences belongs to which university she chaired this this belongs to which university please answer this question quickly here the correct answer here is jawaharlal nehru university all right so let's have a look at what really effective multilateralism implies a uh, global partnership on what issues main issues are renewed solidarity between people and future generation and also women centered development women centered uh, sustainable development all right a new social contract on human rights better management of critical global commons global public goods that deliver equitably and sustainably all right now let's have a look at this this uh, high level advisory board was constituted by the un general secretary we all know antonio guterres right the chair of the board is ellen johnson sir leaf all right and jayati ghosh is a renowned member of this uh, advisory board all right so uh, ms jayati ghosh has worked extensively in the field of macroeconomics development economics and gender studies gender studies and development is her main uh, forte all right other than development and macroeconomics right supporting partner of the board is center for policy research of the united nations university moving on to the last but the most important slide of the day regarding the sports news is that taylor fritz uh, he belongs to the us right and has won indian wells masters uh, which is an annual tennis tournament it is an annual tennis tournament right this is where is it, where is it is this is this tournament conducted this tournament is conducted in the state of california the us all right 
whom did uh, taylor fritz defeat to win this medal uh, the person was guess guess the answer quickly it is very easy if you are an ardent follower of sports and tennis news the correct answer here is rafael nadal all right so this is it for today in case you have any doubts any questions or queries uh, please uh, mention it down in the comments below our team will reach out to you i will reach out to you and personally help you through the doubts thank you so much for preparing keep revising keep studying don't waste time the rbi exam is around the corner take care stay happy bye bye